Good evening, everybody. How are you all doing this evening? I hope you're well. I am on my last legs. I'm absolutely pooped, which is why I'm doing this recipe tonight, because it's comfort food, it's dead easy to do, and there's a chunk of time when I can walk away, and when I walk away, I'll be having my Epsom salts bath. Oh, I need it. I love this recipe for that very reason, that it's so comforting and also I, I don't have to kind of babysit it too much. You know, we're all frantically busy, whether it's family, work, all those other things. I've had a day of a million and one chores and I managed to grab a couple of hours this afternoon to go and paint my shed. So <laughs> I have washed, but I've still got paint on me. I'm still in my painting clothes, for goodness sakes. But that's life, isn't it? You know, we're all running around. We just have to get on with things. So tonight I'm having for supper a real treat. I'm having my favorite roast butternut squash with a goat's cheese stuffing. Now, it's a treat for two reasons. It's a treat because it's just so gorgeous. But it's also a treat because I don't have goats, so I have to buy the goat's cheese. But otherwise, the, the ingredients are really, really simple, which I'll come to in a moment. But the star of the show is, ah, the butternut. Um, it's been a weird year for squash this year, but I have got a load, so I'm really, really happy. Yay! The humble, mighty, beautiful butternut. It's so good for us. And before I cut into it, I just want to talk about why it's so good for us and why everyone should grow it and everyone should eat it. This gorgeous little vegetable is packed full of potassium. Potassium is so important to us for our heart health, for our blood pressure health, so to keep our blood pressure regular. Most of us have too little potassium and too much sodium. And I don't kind of really want to go into the science of it too much, but our cells need a very fine balance between sodium and potassium. And like I say, most of us have too much sodium salt and too little potassium. So stick some butternuts in your diet and for that matter, bait spud is really good for potassium. So it's really good for our cardiovascular health. It's full of fiber, which is great for our gut health because anything that helps us to get rid of the waste, fabulous. But it's also really filling because of that fiber. So if you're trying to lose weight, it's great because it's low in calories, high in fiber. You'll feel full, you'll feel satisfied after eating it, but you won't have had too many calories. I don't care about calories. <laughs> well, as you can all tell. Full of vitamin A, which is really important for our eye health and our skin health. Full of vitamin C, which is great for our immunity. Oh, it, the list is almost endless. The minerals, it's got really good levels of manganese, which helps us to absorb calcium, so it's great for our bone health. The myriad phytonutrients in it have been shown through some pretty sturdy research to have really good anti-inflammatory qualities. So if you're trying to fo follow an anti-inflammatory diet, stick some butternuts in your diet because they're really good for you. They're particularly useful, according to research, I don't have it myself so I can't tell you from my own point of view, but they're particularly good for uh, rheumatoid arthritis. I have osteoarthritis, so it's a kind of different ball game. However, I do get inflammation, so anything that's gonna help with inflammation is good by me. So that's the star of our show. The very easy peasy to grow, although not so much this year, humble little butternut. So let's have a look at the other ingredients. So, as with pretty much everything I cook, this is super simple and pared down. In fact, I think it's true of pretty much everything I do in my life. I just try to keep things really simple. And it occurs to me that most of the meals I make have got maybe three, four, five ingredients and that's it. 
But the thing about having a few ingredients is you really get to taste those individual ingredients together. Oh, love it. So over here I've got, oh, I tasted them a bit too much. I had some um, walnuts mm, and I've just crushed them a little bit and given them a bit of a toast. Um, something to remember with your nuts and seeds in general is store them in the fridge because just keeping them in the cupboard they can go rancid. I've got here some just herbes de Provence. Oh, they smell divine and delicious. I bought those while I was in France. Gorgeous. A little bit of creamy goat's cheese. Do you know what? I'm not going to give you guys amounts. It's all kind of by the eye, but this is enough for half of a butternut, which is what I'm going to do. So it's kind of a scoop of goat's cheese. And this is where this recipe is a treat for me because the goat cheese had to be bought, but I reckon that's about 50 peas worth. And then I've also got maybe a heaped tablespoons worth of sun-dried tomatoes. These I'm really, really lucky to have because I have a friend in central Italy who makes these and bottles them and sends them all over the world and sells them, but she always sends me a couple of pots. So I'm very, very grateful and lucky to have that. So that's it, that's all our ingredients. We've got a butternut, a couple of other ingredients and some herbs. Done. Let's get stuck in. So half your butternut, this half I'm going to save for, ooh, another lovely recipe. Where's my spoon gone? I need a spoon. Um, I'm going to show you a recipe with that tomorrow, but for tonight, simply take a spoon. I know a lot of you will know how to do this already, and it's, you know, teaching your granny to suck eggs or whatever that phrase is. I keep trying to remember the phrase, but I don't know it. But for those who haven't cooked with butternut before, use a fairly sturdy spoon just to scoop out all the seeds and gunk. And then you create this gorgeous little hollow that we're going to stuff later on. Scrudge it out. Lovely jubbly. Done. Now, oh sorry, I should have mentioned, um, set your oven to 180. That's degrees C. I don't know what it is in Fahrenheit. I don't know what the gas mark is because I don't have either, but just Google it and you'll find out. Then I'm just going to cross hatch, which just lets the heat get in, the oil get in. Oh, yum, yum, yum. <clears throat> so it's had a bit of a cross hatch. Now grab your oil, just a quick slurp of oil in there. And I use a little brush to spread the oil out. Just give it a good coating everywhere. And that's that bit done. And into the oven, that's going to go on your baking tray, preheated oven at 180, and that's going to go in for about 40 minutes. While that's in, we're going to now move on to making the stuffing. So the squash is now in the oven, roasting away, lovely. And all we're going to do is combine these ingredients. I'm just going to mash them up in the bowl somewhat. So it's the bit of goat's cheese, the sun-dried tomatoes, I've chopped quite, quite small, some toasted walnuts, and let's have a healthy, oh, maybe a teaspoon, a bit more than a healthy teaspoon of the herbs. And then simply scrudge it around, mash it up. Actually, I think I'm going to get a, bit, a little bit more goat's cheese. I did buy quite a load of it because having looked at the size of the cavity in the butternut squash this is something you never know with squash you never know what size of a hole you're going to get but i've got quite a big cavity in there so i'm going to get some more goat's cheese out bear with me for a second okay so i've put a dollop more in <laughs> mm, yum, yum, yum. so that's now more like about a pound's worth of cheese 
if you find you make too much of this, um, just don't panic, whack it in the fridge and have it the next day in maybe a baked sweet potato. Mmm, 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 gorgeousity. And that's, that's basically it. That's ready now to go into the squash. The squash has got 40 minutes to go. So now I'm gonna go and have a bath, get out of my painting clothes, and start to try and feel human again. Yay! Ah, oh, the restorative powers of an Epsom salts bath. Is there anything more gorgeous in the world? Ah, yes! Getting out of the bath and getting the last stage of your supper ready. Really, this is one of the reasons I absolutely love this meal because bath, it's doing its thing. Anyway, it's time to get out of the oven. Oh, my glasses are going to steam up. I'm going to drop it on the floor. Hang on, glasses off for a second. So give it about 35, 40 minutes. You can give it a little stab to see if it's to your consistency and then we can get stuffing. Oh, yum. Even at this stage, it looks good enough to eat. Actually, it is good enough to eat just like this. But I'm not going to eat it like this. I'm going to stuff it. Ah, come on, let's get stuffing. Sorry, I wished you all around really quickly then, didn't I? Um, spoons for stuffing and spreading. I can't tell you how much I just want to get this in my belly ah where's that little bit extra oh hold on a second oh so ram it in just absolutely ram it in squash it down spread it around <laughs> get as much in as you can and like i said if you've got a bit left over you can always shove that in the fridge and have it tomorrow in a baked potato or sweet potato or something like that. I'm so salivating at the thought of this. So, mm, this is going to go back into the oven for about anywhere between five and ten minutes. It's usually even more like about eight minutes. Give it a chance to just kind of bubble up a bit. And then it'll be time to scoff. Oh, yum, scrum diddly yum. We're there, we're ready. Oh, <laughs> worth waiting for. I can't wait to sink my gnashes in. Like I say, this, I, I love this because for the most part, I mean, it takes about five minutes prep and then for the rest of the time, I run off, have my bath and then I get to eat it. So let me have a quick show to you of how it looks. That wasn't very good English, but never mind. I'm just too excited to start eating. <gasps> oh my goodness, I'm salivating. I'm actually going to, um, <laughs> I'm going to ditch you all pretty quickly because <laughs> I want to eat. But I just want to say that oh, it's going to be really, really hot now to fuff it, aren't I? It's so simple, it's so, so simple. And you know, if you're if you're vegan, you could. I mean, the lovely thing about squash is you can stuff it with pretty much anything, and it's going to taste good. Don't stuff it with your old tights. creamy yeah if you're vegan you could maybe try something like you could do say a risotto type rice and some oat milk with other bits and pieces and stuff it with that to get that kind of creaminess but oh my word I should have a salad with this but I can't wait mm. Mm. it's so beautiful give it a go they're such a great veggie to eat for all the health benefits I mentioned earlier. Never mind all the health benefits, 
they're really really gorgeous tasty veg relatively easy to grow hmm pollination was a bit of an issue this year but relatively easy to grow oh, just have one I want to say get stuffed <laughs> because I actually just want now to concentrate on eating this I'm not even gonna wait till I sit down at the table I'm just digging in as I'm talking to all of you but it's just so beautiful mm. 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 this is reward food at the end of a long busy day dead easy to make it's not quick it's almost an hour but most of that time you can be doing something else so guys give it a go give it a go I'm absolutely going to assure you you won't be disappointed so I'm going to say cheerio now because I've got to put my face in the dish Happy harvesting, if you're still harvesting. More than that, happy starting to experiment with all those veg you've laid down for the winter. I'll see you all really soon, I hope. Take care.